boys and girls, welcome to our Faith Over Fear virtual VBS here at Bethel Baptist Church. We are so glad that you took time to join in with us tonight on YouTube. And so we're so excited about our Bible school and we'll hope you'll be able to tune in every evening this week for a different video, a different lesson uh, from God's Word. But before we get started tonight, we're going to treat tonight just like it would be if we were at church having Bible school, I want you wherever you're at to stand up and we're going to do the pledges to our flags and to the Bible tonight. So if you will please stand and we'll just do the pledge to the American flag first. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And now let's pledge to the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. Now let's pledge to the Bible. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Thank you so much, and you may be seated. And again, every evening this week by 7 o'clock on the church Facebook page and on YouTube, you will find a new lesson Sunday through Thursday night. And I hope you'll take time as a family to sit down together and enjoy the lessons from God's Word. Before we close off to uh, go from this setting to the next uh, video, I ask you just to bow your head with me for a word of prayer. And we'll ask the Lord to bless the Vacation Bible School this week. Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for being so good to us, Lord. I pray, Lord, you please forgive me, Lord, being sin in my heart. Lord, the things I've done wrong, Lord, I pray you'll please forgive me. Thank you, Lord, for the family you've blessed me with, for my church family. I thank you, Lord, most of all, for saving my soul. I pray, Lord, you please bless the Bible school this week. I pray you'll just speak to the hearts of our young people, Lord, and to their families and be a blessing to them. I pray you plant seeds in their hearts and lives, Lord, and I pray you please save souls. And I pray you just deal with us all, Lord, and keep us safe. And, Lord, help us, Lord, to live a life that be pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our VBS theme this week is Faith Over Fear, and Miss Wanda has written a song about faith. So I want you to give this song a listen. It is our VBS theme song this week. I want you to learn it, and every night when we play the video, you be sure to sing along. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you so much for tuning in to our live recording tonight. I am Casey Joe Johnson with VBS News, recording live here at Bethel Baptist Church. We have a wonderful program for you tonight with two very special guests who I know you have most definitely heard of uh, in Sunday school or vacation Bible school or at home. I'd like you to make welcome tonight Noah and his wife. Thank you so much for joining us today at v VBS at Bethel Baptist Church this week. 
we are learning about faith over fear. And we are studying about, in Genesis chapter 6, about the great flood. Could you tell us uh, and our viewers tonight a little bit about the great flood, please? Oh my, what a flood it was. But our God is faithful and he protected us. Oh, yes, it was a terrible time, but I, I told my wife and my family that we were going to trust God and serve Him no matter what the world was doing. Most definitely. In God's Word, I know it tells us that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and evil grew continually and also read how the Lord's heart was grieved and He said that He was going to destroy man off the face of the earth. Oh, yes, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. Oh, it was a horrible time. But my Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He found my Noah being faithful and had a plan for him and our family. Tell this man what God asked you to do, sweetie. Oh, yes, I remember it like it was yesterday. God spoke to me about making a huge ark. He told me exactly how to make it. He even told me what kind of wood to use. What kind of wood was it? Oh, well, let's see here. He told me to use gopher wood. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, gopher wood. He told me to put the rooms inside and to cover the outside and the inside with pitch. So pitch is like a black tar that made it waterproof. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, honey. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, sweetie. He told me to make it 300 cubits long, uh, three, 30 cubits high, and 50 cubits deep. Wow, now that is no canoe. That's a, that, that's a huge boat. I mean, that would be about the size of one and a half football fields and as tall as a four-story building. I think we actually have a picture of it. If we could go to the picture, please. My, what an ark it was. That is beautiful. You're a very good carpenter, Noah. Mm -hmm. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Saw, saw, saw. My Noah built an ark big and <laughs> oh, well, he told me to put a window in it and a door on the side, and there should be three levels inside. God sure did have a plan for you and your life. Did you ever question why God wanted you to build such a big boat? I'm sorry, uh, such a big ark. I did just as God commanded me to do. Well, what did your friends and neighbors say about you building such a big ark? I'm sure they had never seen one before. Well, you know, I'm sure that they doubted that God would send a great flood to destroy the earth and everything in it. But God allowed them time to repent, and they chose not to. So who all uh, was able to get on the ark with you? Well, there was Noah and myself, our son Ham and his wife. Our son Sham and Japheth and their wives. Wow, that was a, a big ark for such few people. <laughs> Oh, trust me, there was plenty more in the ark with us. It wasn't just people. God told us to allow pairs of every animal, both male and female, onto the ark. The clean beast we took by sevens, both male and female. The fowls of the air were taken by sevens also, both male and female. The unclean beast we took by two, both male and female. I think we have a picture of that. If we could get a picture of, see, here we have the animals going into the ark. My goodness, there were so many. Wow. But, Mrs. Noah, do you have anything you'd like to add? Oh, yes. There were cows, horses, zebras, monkeys, giraffes, elephants, ducks, toucans, flamingos. Well, every living beast and fowl of the air. <laughs> It was like a floating zoo. Oh <laughs> I can only imagine how noisy that ark must have been. <laughs> you said that right. Here, moo. There, moo. Everywhere, moo, moo. Oh, make Noah had an ark. E I E I O. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I love to sing too. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. So, did it stink at all on the ark? I mean, I can only imagine with all of those animals, there had to be some odors or smells that were on the ark. Seriously, son, what do you think? <laughs> so you and your family and all the animals were inside the ark. What happened next? Well, the rain came 
uh, the waters on the earth increased and the lands began to flood. It rained for 40 days and for 40 nights. I think we have some video footage of that coming up as well. And I can only imagine how you all must have felt knowing that it had never rained before. But our faithful God was with us. The ark was atop the waters and we were dry and safe inside. Then one day God made a winter pass over the earth and the waters subsided. Where did the ark end up? On the mountains of Ararat. At the end of 40 days, my Noah opened the window of the ark. He sent a raven out and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up. I think we have a picture here of the Mount Ararat where the ark uh, took its resting place after the water subsided. Thank you. Very great picture. Then I sent a dove to see if the waters were lowered from the earth. But that little dove couldn't even find a place to rest, and she came right back. Mm. That's when we knew that the waters were still really high, and we better stay in the ark. So how did you know it was safe to leave the ark? Well, seven days after I sent the dove out, I sent it out again. This time the dove came back to me that evening, and oh, be she had an olive leaf in her beak. I knew right then and there that the waters were going down and it wouldn't be long we'd be leaving the ark. So, seven days after that, he sent the dove out the window again and this time she didn't return. My Noah knew that it was getting time to leave the ark. God spoke to me and told me it was time for our family to leave the ark and bring all the animals with us. So that's just what we did. Yep. We all got off the ark. Then I built an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings. Oh, honey, tell this young man about the rainbow. Oh, yes, dear. Our faithful God made a covenant or a promise. What, what kind of promise was it? I think we have a picture of that if, if we could go to that as well. He said he would never send a flood to destroy the whole earth again. He said that the rainbow was a token of this promise between him and the earth. So whenever we see a rainbow in the sky, it's a reminder of God's promise. Wow. Mr. Noah, that is an amazing uh, testimony that you and your wife have. And every time I see a rainbow, I'm going to remember the promise that God gave his people. And uh, I know, and our viewers know as well, that we serve an awesome God. Oh, yes, he is awesome, and he's faithful, too. The same faithful God that saved me and my family from the flood is the same faithful God that is alive today. Yes. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you, Noah and Noah's wife, for mm -hmm. being here with us. And be sure to tune in tomorrow night, and have a great evening.
boys and girls. My name is Miss Janice, and I am going to be able to share with you this week during Vacation Bible School. Wasn't that a really good story about Noah? You know, that was a true story. All of the stories that are in the Bible are true stories. I can't imagine what it would have been like to have been in Noah's day. You know, the Bible says that everybody was just evil. Now, they weren't just wicked and evil once in a while or they made a mistake now and then. Boys and girls, they were evil all the time. Every day. And God destroyed the world with the flood. But the Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And God told Noah what he was going to do. And he told Noah to build an ark. And in that ark would be safety for Noah, his family, and the animals that God told him to take on the ark. And you know what? When God told Noah, Noah believed him. He believed exactly what God said. And he did what God told him to do. He built that ark because Noah had faith. He believed God. He obeyed God. He had faith. Now, it took him a long time to build it. And people probably thought he was crazy for doing it because he had never been near floodwaters before. Not ever. Nobody had ever seen any floodwaters. They might have even made fun of Noah. But Noah kept building. Noah had faith. But then, boys and girls, the rains came and the water started getting deeper and deeper and deeper. People wanted in the ark, but they couldn't. You see, when God told Noah and his family and the animals that he told him to take to go into the ark, God shut the door. He couldn't build it. I wonder how Noah felt wonder if he could hear the rain really loud beating on the ark. I wonder if he could hear people screaming. Noah knew they were all going to drown. I bet Noah thought, I wish they hadn't been so evil and mean. I wish they would have believed God. I wish they would have had faith in God. I wish they, I wish. But it was too late. Then the rain stopped. There were no more voices. Noah had to stay in the ark a long time. I bet he wondered, what's the earth going to look like? What will it be? Me and my family, we're going to be the only people in the whole wide world. It's going to be different. The time came for Noah to get out of the ark, him and his family and all the animals. And the earth, I imagine, did look very different. Maybe it didn't even look so good. You know, boys and girls, sometimes we find ourselves in places or situations that are just a little different than we've ever experienced before. It's kind of like this coronavirus. That's kind of why we're doing vacation Bible school the way we are. You know, and... You, you see people walking around and they got masks on, some of them, you know, and you can't go all the places you want to go because they're closed and they're not open. And it's just different. Sometimes differences make us feel a little uncomfortable. Sometimes they might even make us feel a little scared. Lots of things can cause differences in your life. I know they can. Maybe sometimes children have parents that, get a divorce. Things are different. Maybe sometimes they have to move. Maybe sometimes they have to change schools and make new friends. Maybe sometimes even somebody they love very much and are very close to dies. Things are never the same again. It's different. These things, these differences, lots of times just make us feel un so uncertain. It's like, what am I going to do? What's going to happen next? How is this going to turn out? Boys and girls, we got to have faith in God. Noah had faith in God. You know, when he got off the ark, 
I imagine it looked very, very different. The earth was not the same as it was before the flood. But you know what Noah did? He built an altar. He worshipped God. He praised God. He thanked God. He exercised his faith. And you know what God did? He put a beautiful rainbow in the sky. A promise, boys and girls, that he'd never destroy the world with water again. And he hasn't. Because you see, boys and girls, God keeps his promises, all of them. And the Bible, it's full of promises from God. Wonderful promises. Promises like, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Promises that we can have eternal life if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. God's promises are all true. And I hope that everyone within the hearing of my voice will be especially reminded of God's promises in his word that are all true. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to share with boys and girls everywhere this evening. And we thank you for your precious word. And we thank you that all of your promises are true. You're a good God. You care for us and love us. And I pray you just speak to each heart and remind them of that great truth. In Christ's name, amen.